What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender quick tip for you. So next week I'm thinking about starting a series where we create an architectural model inside of Blender, but one of the things that we need to know in order to do that is how to import an image to scale so that we can use it in order to create our model. So specifically we're talking about bringing in like a blueprint image like a JPEG or a PNG and then scaling that to the proper size so that we can use it as a modeling aid. So if you have any questions about this method, leave a comment down below and uh, let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, there actually aren't a whole lot of resources about doing something like this online. There's a few, but they don't really handle this particular instant. So I'm interested to hear in the comments down below if you guys have a different way of doing this. But what we want to do is we want to bring in a floor plan image and we want to scale it inside of Blender. And so then we're going to be able to use that image in order to model out walls really quickly. And so what we're going to do is I have a simple floor plan image that I want to bring in and I want to bring this into scale. So you can see how it has dimensions in here. So I need to bring this in so that my walls that are supposed to be 10 feet long um, or the image where it's supposed to be 10 feet long actually shows up as 10 feet long inside of Blender. So the way that we're going to do this, so I'm going to start by going into my scene properties and I'm going to change my length to feet. So um, that way we can um, line up with what's in the image. But the first thing we want to do is we want to go to a top down view because if we import our image right now, it's not going to come in at a flat. Um, it's basically going to come in perpendicular to the camera. Well, we want to make sure this is laying down flat um, on this flat plane right here. So in order to do that, we want to make sure that we're looking straight up and down. You can also delete out your default model. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the image in my, uh, in my Explorer, my Windows Explorer, I'm just gonna drag this in. So that's gonna import this as an empty, but it's gonna bring it in as an empty that um, basically that shows your image. And so when this gets brought in, that means you can scale this up and down, you can adjust it, you can move it around just like you would any other object. Um, but I'm just gonna bring that in just by dragging it in. Well, now what we need to do is we need to set the scale. And so in order to do this, what I like to do is I like to add a reference line. And so one thing that's going to be important for how we're going to do this, because Blender doesn't have like a line tool, just like a straight built in line tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the extra objects add on. So you can go up to edit preferences and you can just search for extra objects and you just want to make sure add mesh extra objects has been enabled. This should be bundled with your version of Blender, so you shouldn't have to go find it. All you have to do is check this box. And then when you do that, you can just do a Shift A. So you're gonna have all of these extra objects down below um, that you can use in order to add, add different uh, meshes and other things like that. Well, in particular, what we wanna do is we wanna create a single vertex. So um, you can mouse over this and can see how this will give you the option to add a single vertex or this says vertice. So add a single vertice. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on this button for add single vertice. What that does is that adds a vertice wherever our 3D origin point is. Well, in this case, um, it's just on the origin point inside of my model where the axes intersect. So now we're just going to tab into edit mode and it actually puts you into edit mode by default um, when you do this. But what I want to do is I'm going to go into vertex select mode and I want to select that one vertex or vertice that's in here and I'm just going to extrude this. So I'm just going to tap the E key to extrude. See how when I extrude this, it's going to add another vertex in here and it's going to draw a line between them. Well then I'm just going to tap the X key in order to lock this to the X axis and I'm going to type in 20 feet and hit the enter key. So what that does is that draws a line in here that's 20 feet long. So we now have a reference line in here that we can align our image to. So now I'm going to tab back out of um, edit mode back into object mode. So now what I want to do is I want to align the corner of my object with the edge right here. And you're going to have to eyeball this a little bit um, because this isn't like a smart image or anything like that. There's no actual edges in here. It's just an image. So you're going to have to get it basically like close enough. So the way that we're going to do that is just tap the G key and you can do a shift Z. You shouldn't have to if you're in straight up and down view, but if you want to make sure it doesn't move on the Z axis, you can do a shift Z after you type in the G key. But I'm just going to move this until my corner is aligned with the corner of this edge. And you can kind of zoom in 
to kind of fine tune this. But notice how I'm just aligning this so that my corner is aligned with the corner right here. And then we want to scale our image up so that it aligns with this line. The problem with that is if I tap the S key, this is going to scale about the center and it's going to mess up where our, um, where our corner was, right? So like if we did it that way, we could do this, but we'd have to scale it up, then we'd have to move it, then we'd have to scale it move it and just keep doing that until our edges align, which is a very frustrating way to do this. So instead of doing that, what I wanna do is I want to align this with this corner. So I just undid that so this was aligned. Then you can type the uh, period key on your keyboard. So when you type your period key on your keyboard, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my screencast keys. I wish this would stay on by default. Um, so once you type the period key, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to set your object pivot point. So right now, this object is pivoting based on the median pivot point, meaning right in the middle of the object. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna change this so that this pivots based on the 3D cursor location. So when we do that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna set this so that it's going to pivot based on where the 3D cursor is. Well, the 3D cursor is at the edge of our line. So now, if I scale this out, notice how this scales out while keeping this corner point aligned right here. So now this is scaling out and all I have to do is scale it up until, until the end of my object aligns with this edge right here. So I'm just gonna tap the S key, move my mouse until this aligns. And there's a little bit of just kind of trial and error in here and a little bit of fine adjustment. Because this is an image, you're gonna to have to get it as close as you can. It's probably not going to be perfect, but I've basically got this aligned. So now if I was to draw a line from this point to this point, it would be 20 feet long. And so we can do a quick check with our measure tool just by clicking on measure and then just clicking and dragging between these two points. So you can see how this shows up as 9.99 .99 feet. So we can tell because this is supposed to be 10 feet that our image is scaled properly. And so now that we have our image in here, we can go through and we can start modeling out our walls using this image as a base, which we'll talk about in a video series starting next week. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. I'd love to hear in the comments down below if you guys use a method like this in order to import your scaled images, or if you have a different way to do this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.